TutPad. Hi everyone, and welcome to this TutPad tutorial by Miguel Reyes, where we'll show you how to synchronize a piece of audio with the movement of this character's mouth, also known as a lip sync. So just like this. We're TutPad. You'll see that this is something very simple and easy to do. One of the first things we need to do is create in Illustrator the different positions of the mouth when we speak, how our mouth moves for each letter or sound. I've made nine. You can make more by searching for some examples or references if you want to. Maybe your audio has different letters to mine, or it might be an exclamation or a question. For your project, you don't have to do this that I've done here. This is just to show you the different positions. What you do have to do is create it in one Illustrator document and then divide each of the positions into layers, as you can see here. The first layer is for my character, so I've called him Mike. And on the other layers, I have the different positions of the mouth. The face also changes a little depending on the letter that he's pronouncing. So for example, the O makes the face a little bigger. But when he says the letter U, it shrinks slightly. So once you have this design with all the positions, you can go to File, Save As and name it something like Mouth Positions. Make sure this option is activated, which is Create Compatible PDF. OK, and now we can go over to After Effects. In our Project Panel, right-click Import File. And there we have our Mouth Positions. Double-click, Import Kind Composition, Footage Dimensions, Layer Size, OK. Let's change the name to Tutorial, for example. Double click, and there we have the layers. Our character mic is right at the bottom. Click on the last position, press Shift, and then select the first one to select all of them. Now go to Layer, Precompose, and name this composition Mouth Position Frames. OK. Let's double click and now we're going to adjust each one in one frame. So go to the first frame. Select all the layers and press Ctrl Shift D to cut and delete this part here. And now everything is in just one frame. We'll adjust in sequence so we don't need to move them one by one. So select all of them, right click, keyframe assistant, sequence layers. OK, and look what happens. Now go up to frame 8. We're only going to adjust the work area of our composition. So it occupies the space of these nine layers we have here. In this case, nine frames. So press N and here you have the work area end. And we're going to cut these frames here. So right click, trim comp to work area, and there we go. Now, when we want to use any of the positions, we always need to see it from the beginning. So if we want to use the letter U, this will be frame zero. If we wanted to use TDS, then that would be frame 6. The letter E is not frame 9, it's frame 8, because we're starting from frame 0, even though we have 9 frames in total. OK, so it seems the animation time is too short. I have the audio here, which I'll copy. 
And the audio, as you can see, is longer than our composition, which only has nine frames. So, what do we need to do? First, right click, Time, Enable Time Remapping. And this allows us to adjust the time to whatever we need. What we'll do is erase this keyframe from the beginning. Click on the mouth positions here. Drag it down to the bottom, right down here where we see this dark green color. Drop it here. And now we can see both timelines together. This way we know which frame to select. Right now I'm at frame zero and that's why we see the letter U. If I go to frame eight, see how it's changed to the letter E, which is here. So when it starts, I want to have this frame, which would be number one. We'll then right click and toggle hold keyframe. And you see that the shape of the keyframe has changed. And what is this for? Well, imagine that I create a keyframe around here. I'll put eight. And the keyframe is not diamond shaped as usual, it's square. This means that when we toggled the keyframes, we don't have any central animation here. There's nothing in the middle. See that here we have one and then it jumps straight to number eight. If they weren't toggled, then in this space between one and nine, there would be an interpolation, meaning that we'd see all the other frames that make up this composition. But this way it goes from one right to the other and this makes it much easier for us to use the mouth positions. Now we need to adjust the audio. The sentence is weird touchpad. So we need the W at the start, which is frame two. Let's put that in here. Carry on with the letter E, frame eight. Again, two for the R. And another E to finish the word we're, frame eight. There we go, we're. You can adjust this now like the example I provided. So let's take a look. We're touchpad. It's quite simple as you've seen so far. I now want to show you a technique. So right click, new composition, and let's call this main composition. Right click, new solid, and let's call it background. So this is our background, and here we have our character. And let's put him on top, like this. And we need to sync the audio with the mouth positions. But the positions are here in this composition, and the audio is in the other. So how will we adjust this if the audio is in one place and the positions are in another? What we need to do is create a control. We could use it in this composition or in any other. 
Let's right click, New, Null Object, place it on top and click on the eye to hide it. And we'll name it Lip Sync Control. In Effect, we'll select an expression called Slider Control. And we're going to parent this slider control with the mouth positions, with the time remapping. So let's remove the keyframes. Then, right click, time, enable time remap, delete this last keyframe, and this is what we're going to parent. To parent it, we first need to lock the slider control effect by clicking on the padlock. And if we then go to Tutorial, the effect is still here. With Math Position selected, press Alt, click here, and click on the Whirlpool to parent it with the slider control. But now when we adjust the slider control, we're going to come across a problem. And that is that the time of the slider is very different to the nine keyframes that we have in our composition. So this is what we'll do. Here we'll place a variable, A equals, underneath we'll write frames to time, A in brackets. And this way, as you see, we can adjust the slider and we won't have that problem. We can edit the range of this slider by right clicking and edit value. And here we'll put zero to eight. Okay. Look now when we put each of the frames. So one, two, three, four, five, and you can see now at the beginning we need to put frame one, create a keyframe, press U and there it is. And here in mouth positions we need to put the time remapping up to the last frame. And again we need to toggle hold keyframe. And now we can just carry on adjusting it to match the audio file we have. And you see that although we're not in this composition, with the control slider we can adjust it very easily to the audio file. Okay, great, so with that we're done. Now you can create your very own lip sync animations. So I'll see you next time. Bye!